Hi, I'm Melissa Coates. Today I want to talk about one of the best things you can do to improve your Power BI implementation, and that is the separation of data sets from reports. By this, I mean use of separate PBIX files. Let's begin with why. There are several advantages to separating data sets and reports. When separate people are responsible for data modeling versus report creation, separating the PBIX files simplifies collaboration. This is helpful because Power BI Desktop does not support multiple users working at once. When reports aren't tightly associated with the data set, you now have flexibility to create however many report pages you want. If you have a report right now that has grown to, say, 30 pages, that's too much to navigate through. Separate report files with less pages targeted towards specific needs is far more usable. When we have fewer data sets, there is less work to create and maintain measures and row-level security, which saves time for data set owners. Fewer data sets means it's that much easier for report creators to determine which data set to use for their report. It also reduces the number of data refresh operations that need to run. This takes some processing load off of your source systems, potentially reduces the number of people who need direct access to source systems, and uses your Power BI resources more efficiently. Reducing the number of redundant or repetitive data sets is always helpful for lessening security and compliance concerns. Finally, it also reduces the risk of inconsistencies or inaccuracies between multiple data sets. Now you know why, let's get to the five tips. Tip one, consider publishing your data sets to separate data workspaces from report workspaces. Here I have two data sets, which are serving five reports. The reports use data from their respective data set via live connection. The data sets have been published to a workspace in the Power BI service called Sales Data, whereas the reports reside in a different workspace called Sales Analytics. The biggest advantage to separate workspaces is permissions management. The data workspace has very few people who may edit that content, whereas the reporting workspace allows many more users to publish their own reports. Having distinct workspace permissions lets us protect the data sets from inadvertent changes, especially when they are certified or have a lot of downstream report dependencies. It also reduces ambiguity when data is managed by one team and reports are owned and managed by another team. This might occur when centralized IT or BI team produces data sets and a decentralized analyst produces reports. And last but certainly not least, row-level security will still work for report creators who don't have edit permissions on the data workspace. Report creators only need read and build permissions on the data set in order to access the data via live connection. Not having full edit capabilities ensures that row-level security is invoked, which is a huge advantage. Tip two, use the report pages that come along with a dataset file to document the dataset. Including documentation alongside the dataset is helpful for teammates who might need to work on this dataset at some point or even for yourself in the future. It also means you won't have an empty report and you won't need to delete the empty report once the file is published to the service. Tip three, manage and audit the dataset permissions. Each dataset has its own set of permissions which are managed in the Power BI service. This is separate from workspace permissions and separate from sharing operations. For this dataset, there are four groups and one user who have been granted rights. Azure Active Directory groups contain sales members and contributors who have been assigned the build permission. Note that the build permission is implicitly granted to anyone who has direct workspace permissions above viewer, that is contributors, members, and admins. The build permission is what allows someone to create their own report from the data set. And there are multiple ways to grant data set permissions, like during sharing or during app publishing. 
So that's why it's important to specifically manage and audit data set permissions right alongside your other permissions and auditing processes. Tip four, use certified and promoted endorsements on your data sets and data flows, which will help reusability even more. Setting certain data sets to be certified or promoted can help your self-service report creators a great deal. When a data set has been certified, this is a signal that it is trustworthy. It's been validated. Business rules and naming matches organizational expectations. Because it does involve some rigor in order to ensure trustworthiness, very few people should be allowed to certify data. In Power BI Desktop, when we do a get data to connect to a data set which has been published to the Power BI service, certified data sets show up first, followed by promoted data sets. This is what makes them more easily discoverable by report creators. And that brings us to our final tip. Tip five is to teach report creators how to use live connection mode. To take full advantage of reusable data sets, it's important that report creators are comfortable with how to work in live connection mode. When creating a new report in Power BI Desktop, rather than importing data again, use Get Data to connect to an existing Power BI dataset. Once connected, all of the normal report creation capabilities are available, and report level measures may also be generated. And that wraps up our top five tips for separating datasets and reports in Power BI. Thanks for watching.